Hello, everybody. Um, I think we're getting close there, and there we go. All right, I'm going to share my screen and try and drive this um, meeting as I want to using this lovely agenda. Um, and I'm just going to, we don't really have any upcoming um, events. Um, and um, from, from my perspective, unless anyone on the call is um, hosting OKD related um, talks or events, um, if you are, let me know. The next thing I have up on my radar is um, <clears throat> a, a November 17th at KubeCon. Um, I'm going to be hosting an OpenShift Commons gathering there um, and probably trying to put together a panel of um, or a talk at somehow of some ilk around OKD um, and insert that into the agenda. So stay tuned for that. Um, if anyone's doing meetups or anything like that that's using OKD um, or talking about OKD under the hood um, in some aspect, um, just let me know and I'll use my social channels to get the word out about that. Um, I think we have, let me just double check here, I'll come back here, who's who's on the call right now. We have Christian, who I will unmute and unmute all, Christian and Charo. So I'm wondering, I know Vadim couldn't come, maybe Christian, if you could give us a little update on any um, issues or um, engineering bits that have gone over in the past two weeks have come up. Um, I haven't synced with Vadim. Um, and from my side, there's not a lot of news this time around. Okay, all right. This may be a short meeting, which is always a good thing. Um, so. We're still waiting for a, a place to host the binaries for code ready containers. Yeah, so um, that did not happen. Um, I take it in the background. Uh, not yet. Okay, so. And it's not something that we could put on Quay.io. I'm just wondering, is it? They're pretty huge, is what I, I recall. They they are, yeah. Well, and they're not container images. They're yeah. you know they're downloadable executables. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think where else we could put it. Um, and I think the conversation you and I had was, um, where are the current ones being hosted? And I think the answer was it was behind a subscriber firewall. Is that correct? It is. And and Praveen said that that they have to go through a a, a Red Hat group um, to post new releases. We were hoping we could find a place, and we may still be able to find a place uh, in Fedora, okay. wherever. Fedora is hosting their things. Um, I'll I'll find that email thread and raise it back. It may be that um, Dusty or somebody from that team just hasn't had time to look at it yet. Uh, Neil, do you have any um, thoughts on this? Neil is who's my one of our other Fedora folks here on the call. Well, um, I would if I knew what we were talking about, because I just came in as Charo just finished saying a sentence. Ah, okay. Charo, you want to explain the size problem? Um, for yes. Yeah, so we, we've got working builds now for code ready containers for OKD. Cool. Uh, we need a place to put them uh, that we can link to from OKD.io so people can download them. And right. They're about two gigabytes each because the holy cow. Yeah, well, because <laughs> the binary, the actual, if you download the, you know, the the supported CRC, the binary actually includes the embedded virtual machine. Right. Uh, that that is OKD or or OCP in the case of Wise, right, right. Right. Okay. So so we just we need a place where we can put these that, you know, as we build new releases, we can uh, put the new images up there. So there should be a place. Uh, so um, I think it should be possible. Uh, I would suggest filing a ticket 
with the Fedora infrastructure team on the Fedora infrastructure Pagger group. Uh, I'll just drop a link into that into the chat. Um, and then it's a question of figuring out um, how we want that to distribute. Like there's, we, yeah, so like I think putting it somewhere is the easy part, figuring out how people can, how it will be replicated so that it is accessible for everyone is the harder part. Um, technically, we can of course make it part of the mirror network. The problem is that there's nothing in the container ecosystem that supports a mirror network. You don't really have a good way of dealing with that. Well, these aren't containers. They, these yes, are... but the binary itself, oh, well, the binary is already fully self-contained, so it could just be mirrored as a blob. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, so we could probably put it on the mirror network along with the rest of the Evcos stuff. Um, uh, it, it's a question of just working out the logistics of how we upload and how we sync and things like that. Most of that is tied into Bodhi, and, like, obviously this is work that way. This will probably wind up being something similar to what we do with Fedora Media Writer, which is, I don't remember exactly how that's distributed, but there's some precedent for it. File a ticket there, and let, and we can work on figuring out how to get that rolled out. I okay. don't expect there to be a problem other than, like, figuring out the logistics of how this is going to work. Yeah. Because we already do this for a couple of other things. Nothing quite so enormous as a two gigabyte, you know, Go binary, but, you know, but we've done it before. It's like a giant ISO image. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not, not, that's Self-installing ISO. <laughs> that, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for that, Neil. I, I figured there'd be somebody on this call who um, could figure this out for us, so thanks. Um, and the sooner we can make that happen, the better. Uh, now my mach my machine has frozen up, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second and go back. Here, you should see it again. All right, and I know that Charo and I have made no progress on cookbook and recipes, um, so uh, we we still we still have that. The um, all of the um, all of the videos that we did on the 17th are now up on the YouTube channel and that, that's the content that we're going to use um, to do this for uh, or at least kick it off um, and, and yay there was um, there was also a person who had an Alibaba one um, and they there's been a couple of questions I've seen them fly through on um, the Kubernetes slack on OpenShift dev and I'm oh they were interested in the Alibaba one it was, I think it was the person that we, who was going to do the Alibaba one is now just getting to it. And I don't oh. think that person is on this call. So um, if they are, speak up and, and let, let me know. Did we get any further with the um, con uh, Fedora containers folks? Um, I know you were going to talk to, um, his name is escaping me. Um, Plamont. Plamont. Um, Christian, did, did we figure out anything to do with them jointly? In the past uh, I haven't. I haven't talked to them in the past two weeks. Okay. Is when is do they have a SIG meeting scheduled? I don't know if they do yet, but if they do, I don't know what it is. Um, again, that I think this is more. We got to talk to Clement and figure it out because because the SIG is literally just starting up. They probably don't have everything quite firmed up yet. So how about if I just, um, if somebody gives me um, Clement's email. In the yeah, chat, I can do that. Um, I will just invite him to the next one of our meetings. That and, works. And I think that'll be easier than trying to track him down and do something joint, make it joint with us or something of that. Yep, matter. okay. So if you hand that off or um, even just forward him that email suggestion, Neil, that would be great. Um, and yeah, I'll just, dr I'll drop the... Um... I'll just drop the email address into here. Oh, there we go. I did, in fact, spell it correctly. Very good. All right. And, and Christian, I'll CC you and Neil both on that so everybody knows. Um, sure. That I've done, Sounds that good. I've done it. All right. Perfect. Cool. Um, I don't know if anybody ever saw the, the, the press release that went out on Sunday, but the world shifted and up for ARM, and NVIDIA just bought ARM. So um, yeah. I don't even know what to say about that other than the world shifted. And um, that's going to be an interesting new world. But I don't think um, 
this is um, the IoT stuff. Any, if there's anyone on who has um, an update of the conversations going on from Fedora IoT and the Fedora Core, uh, Core OS folks. I don't think they have been talking yet, so there wouldn't be anything to update. Yeah. Get this one up there. Yeah. Although I expect I expect they are if we're talking if we're talk if we're talking about what Nvidia said in their press release, then we're gonna start seeing people caring about OpenShift in ARM-based data centers rather than in little crappy devices out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So um, yeah. I know. And I'm we concerned. also have interest from IBM to build on the power architecture. Uh, they'll be joining us sometime if they yeah if they find time for it. Yeah. They've also been bugging. So, yeah. uh, they've also been bugging some of us kind of randomly about supporting System Z, which is just gonna be all kinds of fun because uh, I don't think we have a way of testing that. <laughs> I, I know. So, yeah, I have the, those in my home lab. You have a mainframe in your home lab. I'm impressed. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> So one, one problem we have here is that our Prow CI only runs on x86, and uh, we need to pull our releases, our payloads from that CI. So right now we don't have any, yeah, we, we can't uh, build any other architectures right now. And we'll have to figure out a way how to either use a second and third build system um, for each architecture, or how to extend Prow to actually have some uh, Worker nodes that run Both on both of those the seem equally unappealing. <laughs> yes, um, right now we don't support clusters with a mixed infrastructure. So um, as Prow runs on Kubernetes uh, on OpenShift 4.x, uh, uh, we is that an yeah, OpenShift uh, restriction or a Kubernetes one? Because like I've heard mixed opinions uh, on that. It might be an OpenShift one, uh, but I haven't heard of anybody running a mixed Kubernetes cluster either. Oh, okay. Um, well, as OpenShift is, uh, you know, has a strong support um, commercially from Red Hat, um, I don't think we'll allow that for the time being. Um, how, how that would work with upstream Kubernetes, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't work, um, but we'll definitely have to uh, do something about that in the future. I think once there's more interest um, from the IBM side, we'll definitely um, use them to set that up for us. And for uh, ARM-based things, we'll, we'll just have to see how we can proceed here best. We can probably finagle something from AWS with their Graviton stuff. I mean, I saw Tom Calloway posting numbers about how, how fast, fast uh, it took to build a full Chromium build on the Graviton systems in, like, what was it, a little over an hour, which is uh, 20 times faster than our build system in Fedora can do right now. So uh, and I think I'm being conservative with saying 20 times. Pretty sure it takes like more than a day. So, uh, so like there's a potential thingy there. Uh, I don't know what we can go from there. Uh, Mike, you have a thing to say? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say for the people for people who are interested in kind of these hybrid um, cluster topologies and and multi architecture clusters, there have been some discussions coming out of the cluster API community about like how they can improve tooling to allow for more hybrid. You know, and it, obviously this started as a discussion about how to have a mixed cloud cluster. You know, like AWS GCP or something. But people quickly ran to the point of you know wondering. You know, can I run mixed architectures across different things? So I, I don't have any links like offhand, but if people are curious about that, I'd poke around some of the issues. In the I think this topic's come up before. Yeah, that, that'd be awesome. I don't think we have investigated this um, enough, but yeah, I think we should we should do that now. Um, on the on the operator side, um, to, maybe just to give another quick status update on that. Um, there's been a new uh, bundle format that was introduced um, for the, op the operator hub hasn't actually um, migrated to that. Once the operator hub does that, I uh, will be able to kind of release the same operators that we built for OpenShift, also for the community for OKD. Um, 
it's a little bit we kind of in yeah we kind of have to wait a little bit for that here um just maybe as a as a little teaser we'll be releasing the windows machine config operator to operator hub very soon it's already the pr is already open and we definitely want to aim at supporting okd there as well um, i'm currently helping out that team um, for a little bit um so working on that mostly right now and yeah there should be something soon for that christian can you say something about um if uh, do you know if uh, the windows um machine config operator will also support a vSphere sometime uh, around uh, 4.6? Mm, so I'm not sure if, uh, I think that's a 4.7 uh, target to support that. I'm not entirely sure, but um, so we will support um, AWS and Azure first and then vSphere as a third option, probably not until 4.7. Yeah, it's also mm -hmm. in the works. Okay. I think 4.7 is correct on that, Christian. Yeah. That probably makes some sense, considering how much effort it's been just to get Azure and AWS working. I Azure imagine isn't actually working, kind of... working yet, but um, yeah. Well, of course. I mean, I was trying to be charitable, Christian. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm working on that right now, so I just, um, yeah, it's probably <laughs> my fault. I haven't gotten it to work yet, but um, um, Mike, I actually have a PR open for the cluster API provider. Um, that I'll, I'll 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 hit you up with it. And yeah, uh, I think, I, think it... I, I saw your name there, Christian. So yeah, hit me up again though for sure. Yeah, I think I have to change up a few things. I want to test it first, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll definitely ping you. Um, and do you know if the machine config operator can also change the configuration of Windows nodes with machine config uh, com uh, CRs? Uh, no, um, that's that's not something we plan on doing. So we do download the machine config from the machine config server, and then we only take the CNI and kubelet config from that. Um, so we, yeah, the the only configuration you can kind of change uh, there is the CNI uh, plugin configuration and the kubelet config. Um, okay. We don't support writing arbitrary files or anything like we do on Windows nodes. Um, it's really much, much, yeah, much more limited um, mm -hmm. in that regard. Okay, thank you. Uh, that might be something that will be extended, but not right now. Go ahead, Mike. I was gonna say, just to follow up on what Christian's saying, there are a couple PRs out right now that adjust the templates. I think this is on Azure that you can use to mint Windows machines from. So I know there's an ability to change the template that a, a Windows node gets um, minted from. So like that, it doesn't allow you to actually change the configuration at the MCO level, but there there is a way you could do it through the templates. I think that's on Azure. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right. So I'm asking a naive question here um, because I've just been reading about Metal 3. Um, does that help us get any further with ARM, um, the bare metal provisioning, or not? Just a... Maybe. <laughs> maybe is the um, maybe is the probably the correct answer here because as much as provisioning stuff is good to have, um, it doesn't matter when we don't have binaries. <laughs> right now, like the biggest blocker is that we can't actually run anything we provision on ARM um, because we don't have. OKD binaries, we don't have a pipeline for building and testing. We don't have anything, actually, for ARM. Um, I, I'm pretty sure Metal 3 will get us to the point where, like, once we have binaries, it'll be fairly straightforward for us to go and say, here's the thing, go do the thing. Now you have a, you now have a node or a master or whatever. I, I feel like that'll be fine. Um, but we, we, we need to have something to put on there first. Um, and I think as Mike was mentioning earlier, uh, I think we're gonna have to get some more focus in the it, it sooner rather than later on this idea of hybrid uh, clusters um, across architectures. Cause I don't know about you, but I am not all that enthusiastic about running an OKD master node on, on a Raspberry Pi. Um, uh, I, I feel like that's going to end very badly for all parties involved. 
Um, so, so I think it, it's, I think that's definitely something that we're going to have to, as part of doing like serious arm bring up or any alternate architecture bring up, we're going to have to, we're going to have to think about that and figure out how to get there. Um, so, and one more thing to add there, I think with the, especially with ARM hardware, if it's not a full on server thing, uh, we probably won't be able to use the machine API uh, for that, for, for bringing up new nodes, uh, because that needs an out of band management port, um, which, for example, a Raspberry Pi doesn't have. Um, yeah, but you can fake all these like things the on a Raspberry module. Pi. You can right. fake all those things on a Raspberry Pi. Like, you could even make the Raspberry Pi pretend to be a UEFI capable device. Like, it, it's gotten to the point now that, that um, basically, as long as you're working with a Raspberry Pi or a real computer, um, you're probably fine when it comes to when it comes to ARM stuff. But if you're working with anything else, you're just toast. So, um, which is actually quite unfortunate because. This is mostly the fault of the ARM ecosystem, and I don't expect this to get any better, but hey, whatever. Uh, yeah, having them move towards UEFI would be would be nice, uh, having at least that on all the devices. Anyways, uh, I think um, we should focus on getting uh, UPI, um, user provision, provision infrastructure here working first with uh, ARM devices, for example, um, and then we can get the machine API operator um, for that later. But yeah, right now the, the most important thing is that we don't have any binaries built, any containers built for other architectures than um, x86-64. Yeah, one, yeah. one note. We don't even um, have multi cubed images for regular OKD yet. Yeah. I, I don't think yeah, we do need the ironic images um, for just standard um, x86 uh, bare metal. I would I would just say too, and this is kind of I guess a little bit, you know, from where I'm sitting, the Metal Three stuff, you know, it's going to be landing in 4.6, but I think we'll probably see big growth for it in 4.7. They're doing a lot of work on kind of the internal infrastructure for how those resources are managed. So, I you know, back to kind of Diane's point, um, I really wouldn't expect to see like something like, you know, ARM builds or whatever for Metal Three until at least after the 4.7 timeframe, because I just I know that team's spending a lot of time on on kind of infrastructure stuff at the moment. Yeah. And but that's then, fine. We just have to have a plan of attack if we're going to even, if we're going to look at doing ARM, we just need to have a plan of how we're going to get there. And I think starting from binaries and images and then going to UPI is a good starting point. Because by this point, we have enough UPI-based documentation, thanks to Charo, uh, that it should be relatively straightforward for someone to manually online a Raspberry Pi based node if they wanted to. Okay, well, thank you. I mean, I totally thank, you. Agree. thank you for answering all of my questions there. I think um, the reason I was asking um, was because the Metal 3 crew are going to do an AMA for me on um, October 19th. Um, mm -hmm. The two, two guys from Ericsson are coming. So, um, yeah, so if you are, if you want to come with your questions, um, that's, I just thought that it might be a, a way to open up that conversation and just get it on their radar. Um, and I'll post the link to that um, in, into, the, into here as well. So I, I just, I, I know that it, it always feels, the ARM stuff always feels to me like this outlier um, because we got so much other stuff to do, but um, it's on the, the radar. Um, the, I, 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 mentioned I just, Dan, I just posted in the chat, if you're gonna uh, meet with the, uh, Metal 3 guys, um, you could re please remind them to have a look at that issue, uh, which is uh, the list uh, Vadim made with all the images we're missing, and they should, uh, yeah, in an optimal case, they would they would add them, add okay. those images themselves. So the two guys that I, that I, it's Pep uh, Mora um, and who, from Red Hat, but it's two guys from Ericsson, I think, who are maintainers of um, this or end users of it. Um, Ferijan um, Muya Rosa and Mile Kimmerlin, are these either of the guys that you've been chatting with or asking for this? It doesn't, it's not, this isn't signed to anybody yet. So has anybody, has anybody even responded for, to Vadim? 
No, um, I think he tagged some some folks, but Dimitri. Uh, yeah, it, he he reminded them again like four days ago because there hasn't really been any activity on that. Okay. We should probably go ahead and open an issue on each of that repos those repositories, so they so that, yeah they have it on the radar more. Yeah. If you do that, I, and I will now um, invite. Yeah, you. I, I can do. I can do that. Yeah, you can do that. That would be great. And I will. I will see if I remember. Um, to, and I will also try and get um, Dimitri to come to the session um, as well. So we can. And here's Dan, Hellman, Doug. Okay, I know that guy. Okay. Doug's usually pretty responsive. Anyways, um, okay. Moving back to wherever we were. Um. I remember that we had um, uh, the idea that the community should be able to contribute more to OKD um, after after the GA. And where I, uh, I'm stumbling um, most often uh, over is uh, to build um, the images from the release payload on my own to try out things um, like um, an example is say OVN, Kubernetes um, network uh, stuff, um, where I get lots of error messages from, uh, I think, uh, because uh, CI things are still linked in that where I don't have access to. And I think it would be great uh, to get more acceptance from the community if uh, they can build everything uh, on their own. I, I know that this is a big task, but uh, it's the only chance uh, to get more people involved without, yeah, um, leaving the stuff uh, uncompilable uh, behind and getting frustrated. I, I think it would be uh, maybe not the biggest task, but it it would be worth the effort, in my opinion. What what do you think about that? Am I, am I completely wrong? No, that's definitely um, a goal. I'm, I'm interested in what uh, projects you're unable to build yourself uh, specifically, because most of the projects um, should be buildable with just the, the Docker image in the repository. Yes, I think it was the OVN Kubernetes because there was uh, one uh, PR missing. Uh, so Windows containers work with uh, um, OKD 4.5. I was struggling with that uh, since a few weeks. Uh, and uh, yeah, Vadim uh, got me a few uh, tips that said, uh, gave me a few tips that uh, what I should patch, but it was above my yeah skill level with the internals of Open, open Shift. And uh, I, yeah, so is I this specifically for Windows or for any any platform? No, it, it's OV, OVN Kubernetes. There is some thread in uh, Slack. I can I can try to find it. Yeah, if you can throw me the the link to that. Um, so I, I'm what I'm just trying to capture this in in a, in a so that we can follow up on it. Um, is there an, any issue logged at all, or is this more along the lines of our documentation is insufficient? I think it uh, something is weaved um, still to uh, to a Red Hat internal CI uh, system. It's my opinion, uh, but I can I can try to find the link and post it in, in Slack, okay. where where we discuss that with uh, with Vadim. Okay, good. And I was expecting that this is um, a common situation, but if you if you are surprised, Christian, then maybe maybe it's an uh, exception with this repository. And and what I also would love uh, to see is maybe one video. Uh, that explains how to uh, build something and get it into the release payload. So we can do it uh, step by step on our own. There is some documentation, but it seems uh, like uh, maybe it's a better idea to write down the workflow or, or make a video of that exactly step by step what you have to do. Yeah, that would be very nice. Yeah, because I'm going... If, if time permitting, I'm going to attempt to build the the RDO images myself to to try to get Ooh. the bare metal installer working. Um, That'll be fans. To a release payload, um, that that's a gap in in my knowledge too. And if it's documented somewhere, actually, um, Christian, do you know? Um, not really. 
to be honest. In the, o <laughs> in the OKD repositories, there is some documentation from Vadim. Um, yeah, but, but it's a little incomplete. Yeah. So, so we, we composed that payload on the CI system. And what, I've, what I have done in the past is just um, replacing some of those images in there, which you can use with an OC command. Um, but I haven't actually composed my very own uh, payload from the from the start. Um, so I'll have to look. We, we do that in CI somewhere, um, and I'll I'll I'd have to check where that is done and how exactly that is done. But essentially, the payload container only contains a manifest of all the other containers. Um, yeah, it, it just contains the references to all the containers um, that are used by that payload. Oh, so actually just being able to replace a particular container image would probably get us started. Um, yeah, that, that's definitely a thing that is possible just with um, with the OC command and then um, our open, is it OpenShift install? Um, yeah, you can definitely replace images, um, kind of define your, yeah, an override for specific images. For, that's kind of the development flow um, you use when you develop for one specific operator, you would just want to test a devil build of a specific operator image. You can kind of take the standard payload and, and then just replace that one image. So the image yeah. version, the operator version you want to deploy is then deployed. I'll be bugging you about that on Slack. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to dig up some, some um, documentation about that. I'm sure there is some. I just wanted to add another comment here about building um, the individual components from the Docker files that are in those repos. We just had a we just had an internal effort where we were trying to get these Docker files kind of all in the using the UBI8 images, all building off Rel8 or whatnot. And my impression from that is that not all of the projects have the same. I don't know, consistency with how they're creating their Docker files. Uh, our team in specific, like we tried to make very careful to have dockerfile.rel as the builds that use, you know, rel subscription-based. And then we have a Docker file, which is where we're trying to keep all the community-based builds um, in place. Uh, so you could use just publicly downloadable images. But the problem I noticed is that not every project has done that. And there seems to be an unevenness um, so I think, uh, Joseph, what you might have run into, I'm not sure if that's an OpenShift project you were building from, um, but it could be some of our Docker files are not up to community standards at this point, in my opinion. I think we probably need to do another round of making sure that our build CI for our product is building off of these rel images and that we, we leave the community with a good set of artifacts to build from. So that this is just a problem. It's not in every repo, but it, there's an unevenness to the consistency of these things. I just, as a warning, I'll throw that out there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and the same way um, we, we build those images on the CI, the CI can actually replace that from directive uh, within the Docker file. So if you try to build it locally, you might get a different base um, there. Um, and what, even one that might not be publicly uh, publicly accessible or even um, out yeah out there anywhere. So um, you you may have to adapt that if you run it locally. Yeah, I mean this is something we're aware of internally at Red Hat, and we're you know we're trying to make it better, but I don't I don't know how quickly it'll happen, unfortunately. But I mean community help is always appreciated in that respect. So I pasted the, uh, the Slack thread where I just had the problem with the repository and the error message. So okay. just for your information. All right. No, no, I, I don't, didn't want to do that. Go back here. Copy. All right. Is there anything else that we should be covering off today? Any new issues? I'm wondering if anybody wants to take on, because um, the one item that I don't have anyone, we didn't do a deployment on GCP um, of OKD4. Anyone has access to those resources um, or time to do it? Um, that would be lovely. Sally O'Malley, that's a good person, yes. 
I know Sally well. Yes, that's a good hint. Thanks. I will ask her. She's a little busy chairing DevConf US um, these days, so um, hopefully and organizing that. But um, that's what, what, what was the ask there, Diane? You just you want to see a GCP installation or? Yeah, I want to as I captured for the August on August seventeenth, all of the other um, clouds. I would like to for completeness. I'd like to get um, Google Cloud an OKD deployment videoed for for Google Cloud. Um, so I mean, I have access to GCP. I could I could try and do it, but it, it would have to be asynchronous. If I could just record it sometime and send it to you, I could probably do that. Okay, cool. Well, let me, um, I'll start a thread with you and Sally and see which of you has the time to do it, and that would be great. So, um, and then we can edit down. We can fast forward through the cluster up part of it, uh, because that was, you know, on the day of, that was the thing that took the longest. I have a little bit of bad news. Um, the t-shirts are not coming. Um, and I'm trying to get, the, I, I tried, I, this is me. I'm just not a t-shirts and stickers kind of gal. Um, and now we're trying to get them into the um, Red Hat Cool Stuff store um, so that I can ship from there. Uh, I apologize for that. Um, it turned out in order to ship them to everybody, it was gonna cost $75 each t-shirt. So um, I decided that we might want something better than a t-shirt for 75 bucks, like a, a meal with a drink um together sometime soon uh, uh so i i will put a note out on the, the mailing list and and as soon as we get um get it in the cool stuff store then then the drop shipping becomes less of a problem um and that's uh you know that was that was uh, uh an interesting exercise in futility but um it, and taught me that i should stay out of swag business um so uh i know and oh, and yeah. i have there really isn't enough OpenShift swag in the Cool Stuff store. I, I've been shocked that I haven't been able to buy polos and hats, and yeah, I'm not surprised at all. Yeah. I got my hat. Most of, the, most of the community swag disappeared after Red Hat switched vendors two years ago. Yeah, it, and it's, um, it's coming back. I know um, Josh Burkus is working on it, and... Um... And, and that's, uh, yeah, so it, it, you're happy, Joseph, that you're the, not the only one not getting the shirt. Seeing as how you design, designed the logo, I figure I should figure out how to at least print one and get it to you. Um, <laughs> uh, I just feel like my, that, the poor woman who is my assistant um, for, for these sorts of things has you know, tried mightily. So Morgan Becker, thumbs up to you for, for trying to figure out how to make that happen. Um, but I just, I just, I couldn't, couldn't figure out a way around the job shipment and the customs charges. Um, and this is, this is the thing. When you do fly to um, an event at, with a box full of t-shirts, you don't have to pay customs. And everybody else has to tuck it in their t-shirt, in their suitcases and take them home. You don't have to deal with that. But uh, yeah. Anyways, we will get them, get something um, OKD-ish into the um, cool stuff store at Red Hat, and that will enable me to and anyone else to um, uh, ship them uh, easily. So that's, but that'll probably take another month of Sundays um, to, to get that figured out. So that's um, what the bad news I have for today. Other than that, most things are going well. Um, and there will be, um, oh, I, I, swag wise, I was gonna thank Dato, um, I got my Fedora Nest stuff with your beautiful stickers in it. And yeah, you, there's uh, a Dato, you're welcome. There's a Dato sticker on the back of this laptop and uh, the little robot one was very keen with the kids. So um, well done. Uh, and so that was great. If anyone- It was uh, our pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> and I was, I was very embarrassed because here was, they managed to get this whole little thing off. But when you start thinking about the cost of FedExing that little bag of stickers to everybody who attended Nest, my cheap New Englander mind just said no. So um, <laughs> even when it's not my money, it said no. So anyways, um, but thank we you. We did it. Yeah, you did it. I, so, I haven't received mine. Are you sending it to Germany as well? Uh, so I'm not the one handling the sending of the stuff. Yeah. You'll need to you'll need to bug Marie. I believe we're sending it everywhere. We're having trouble. Um, we're having trouble sending it internationally because, well, um, um, everybody's having trouble shipping internationally. Yeah, it's it's swag in the virtual era has 
is 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 not an easy thing. Um, so it's a good thing I got all the, the swag that I ever needed over the past few years. Um, so uh, that's that. Um, so next meeting, hopefully, we'll have Clement um, come and talk to us about what's going on in Fedora Containers world. And mm -hmm. other than that, I think I'm hearing a little bit of closure for today, ending 20 minutes early, unless someone else has another talk. And going, going, gone. So, um, Charo, hopefully we can connect with the Fedora folks and get that image up there and update the, the landing page. And then once we get that, then um, we'll move on to the next task of cookbooks and recipes um, and figuring out what to do with all, how to get the videos more prominent on the pages of OKD.io and in the world. Um, and we're working on a Tekton pipeline now. That's a good one. Um, and anyone who wants to write blog posts or anything else about um, OKD, just let me know and I will um, endeavor to get them out in the social channels. And if you see anyone doing OKD in the wild, um, we're always looking for case studies. And as I mentioned, I'm going to do a gathering on November 17th at KubeCon, day zero, um, and would like to have a panel um, or a talk around OKD there. and um, get that done. Um, so if you are going to have in the next, I'd say, let's see, what's today? Six, so the next 30 days, if you've got OKD running in production or a POC someplace or know of someone, let me know. And keep putting your dogs in the videos because I am currently dogless and um, it's painful. So, all right. Is Charo taking care about the dev community together? Yes, Charo is like on the hook for everything now too. So Joseph is asking. Oh. Yeah, Char uh, Charo Sorry. was supposed to be my external person on like co cherry thing and then we hired him. So, yeah. um, so now we're gonna have to like find another externally, external body um, to, who's willing to do that. Um, it might be an onboarding process um, for a red heart Red Hat hire, so um, just be careful. What does the co-chair do? Um, shows up for meetings and answers questions. Oh. And, yes. um, you know, so that's, there. there is no, it, yeah, there's not really anything super official about the co-chair role, but I, I like having uh, myself as a community person, um, a couple of engineers from the Red Hat team, and at least one external um, community representative um, as a co-chair. So um, too bad Old Dominion Transport um, was was oh. a good one, but um, that lasted about 15 nanoseconds, and then <laughs> somehow he got oh. himself hired. I, I I wasn't part of that process. I didn't do it. Um, he did. I don't know. Who well, I him? might I might be willing to do that if you know Charo and I could fit, talk about like what this involves and what I need to what we need to do. Um, then maybe. I think, it, yeah, I'd love to be cloned. Um, not really, these genes, um, yeah. Anyway, there's some recessive genes here. Um, what, what I'm really looking for is um, an end user that has a production um, deployment, and I think Dato is, is coming, coming up soon. Um, yep, so. we're working on it. Our infrastructure is being um, revamped is the nice way I could do it. Uh, the 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 more accurate way is it's being set on fire and 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 then uh, rebuilt from the ashes um, to support things like OKD um, at scale. So our our production deployment strategy hopefully should be kicking in fairly soon now. Things have been sluggish because of well, world events uh, have not exactly made things easy. Um, you're uh, muted, you. Diane. Oh, I'm not muted. I'm just making funny faces at the chat. Oh. Um, well, I actually have to say that I think Joseph Meyer, uh, if you have um, 2,000 devs using OKD in production um, in the next few weeks, that would be a wonderful um, use case uh, to to talk about. Um, so let's 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 see how that all rolls out. Um, and and tell me again. Um, how, what the name of your company is, Joseph? Uh, Rodi and Schwartz. Rodi and Schwartz. Okay, I knew I was going to say it wrong if I said it out loud. Um, so 
that that might be um, another um, possibility too. So let's um, talk about it on the email thread. And um, yeah, BCIT, we love you, BCIT, British Columbia Institute of Technology. <laughs> yes. Isn't that your alma mater? Uh, no, uh, I'm UMass Amherst. Uh, I, uh, okay. I'm a New Englander. So uh, yeah, but and I don't think they live in know. Vancouver. <laughs> I know the long story. Um, so that would be um, good luck, Joseph. And and maybe what we can do, Joseph, is showcase you um, at the gathering um, in November um, for that deployment and what it took. If if you're if you're willing and your company is willing to to let us do that, um, that would be great because I, I really want to figure out how to showcase some of the OKD work and Bruce. Yeah, ask your boss, Joseph, that would be great. Um, and maybe um, the other co-chair, like, I, I, you can never have too many co-chairs in my book, um, is, is, the, is the Fedora liaison. Um, so maybe that um, we can put Neil in, in that role in something. Because um, <laughs> I love, I love co-chairs. That means I can not show up once in a blue moon. Uh, I don't know if we want you to not show up because we like having you here. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to let everybody go back to their day jobs, and there's a lot of stuff um, going on, so I'm going to try and um, get Clement to the meeting next time. So thank you, guys. Um, take care and be safe. Um, hopefully you're not as smoky as it is here today in um, British Columbia. Um, I know BCIT downtown Vancouver, I bet you are um, getting smoked out too, but we're hoping that everybody in Washington and Oregon and California are safe today. So. Take care. See y'all. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.